All right, video number four in the Service Worker series. Now this one, we're gonna talk about how you can integrate caches with the Service Worker. So we can use the Service Worker to manage different versions of the cache and save all these files that we wanna use in the future. So if you're building a progressive web app, you're gonna to want to be able to save files so that the app still can run offline. Because in the future video, we're gonna be talking about Service Workers handling fetch calls and how they can use their own access to the cache API to use those files to keep the app looking like it's still running. All right, so let's jump right in here and we'll talk about how to bring our cache code into, into our app. So I'm going to start off by registering my service worker. My service worker, I've got a few variable names at the top. I'll come back to those in a moment. Um, but it's just the basic install, activate, fetch, and message commands, and I've got some console.log messages inside them. Now, what I'm doing here is, with these names, these are gonna be the names of example caches. All you need is a string to use as a name, and you can create a cache with that name. So if you watch the cache API video, link to it right above there, if you watch that, you know that we can open as many caches as we want, we can call them whatever we want, and then we can access the individual files inside there. So I'm gonna create one called static cache, and I'm gonna use a version number as well. So every time I make a change to this, let's say, let's create a, an array called assets. And this array is going to be a list of the files that I wanna save in my cache. So I'm gonna say, let's take the root, and whenever you're putting your root file, your default index.html file, it's best to put it in both ways because somebody could put this or this into the location bar to search for your file to try and load that page. So we need to have both of those. Then I'm gonna add in my CSS and my JavaScript file. So inside my CSS folder, I've got main.css. Inside my JavaScript folder, I'm gonna have my app.js. I don't want to, I do not want to put um, my service worker in here. The service worker is gonna be managed on its own. It's gonna be run by the browser. So I don't need that here. And my manifest file, when I'm building a progressive web app, that one I can put in, but I don't have that yet because I'm not building a progressive web app yet. So these basic files, this is what I'm gonna have in my cache right now. Now I'm gonna add in some images afterwards, but for right now, we'll just take a look at this. This is another list of files that I wanna have. And to create a cache, we just need to use caches.open and we're going to give it a name. So this name right here is gonna use this version number combined with this to create that static cache. Now, this is all that I'm doing right now. I'll skip waiting. There we go. I have now created a cache called that. Great. So there's nothing inside of it yet, but I've created a cache. Now, Opening the cache itself, that doesn't take any time. I'm not really concerned about the install event being done in the time it takes me to do this. But if I'm gonna to start to add files in there, that could potentially take some time. And that's when we wanna add in the ev.waituntil that we covered in the last video. So that was in part number three. So inside of my wait until, I'm gonna call caches.open and then I'm gonna call my then method. And inside of there, I'm gonna get the cache name that was returned or the reference to the cache itself that was returned by the open method. And inside this function, I'm going to save all of these files inside that cache. So we can say cache dot, now I could loop through it. I could do a loop through assets and call add again and again and again but I'm just gonna call add all, and I'm gonna to attempt to save all of them all at once. So I just have to pass in something that is iterable, like an array. And if you remember from the caching video, we can pass in request objects, we can pass in URL objects, or we can pass in just the strings. 
we just have to make sure that they start with the slash that represents the root of the web server. It needs the entire path. So those are all the assets that I'm going to use. And then once that is successful, we get this function where I can write out a message saying that yes, indeed, that we did actually save them. And just like with any promise, we can also throw the error handler in here. All right, so the static cache one now contains all of these. This was taking place on the install event. So as soon as I save the file, it's going to try to install that which it did, and it has updated this. And in the console, version one's installed, static cache one has been updated. Great. If I change the number here and I save the file, I'm creating a new service worker, version two installed, static cache two has been updated. If I change it again, it runs the install for the new one, three, three, hasn't been activated yet, but it was installed. And we can see I've got all three caches here. They all have the exact same thing, but I have created all these caches with all these files. And we can skip waiting. So now number three is activated and it would be using cache number three. All right, great. This works fine. And I know with the add all method, what I'm doing is I'm going fetching those files, bringing them back and I'm putting them into the cache. So remember that the add all is the same thing as calling a fetch and then calling put. So it's doing both those things, the fetch call and then cache.put. So we're just doing that all together with one command to an entire array. My problem now is that I've got all these extra caches. So if I want to get rid of the other caches, what I need to do is wait for the activate event. Once the activate event happens, I know that I've moved on to the latest version. So let's make this number four. So the next time we save this, it's going to create static cache four. I want to get rid of static cache one, two, and three. So the activate event, this is where we do it. This is where we delete the old versions of the caches. Again, we're going to use ev.waitUntil because we need to wait long enough that it can loop through everything and actually do the deleting. So caches.keys, this method returns a promise to us and it's gonna be a promise of all the cache names. So static cache one, two, three, those three things right there. That is what we're going to have returned to us by the keys. So inside of then, we will get keys. This is an array. We can now loop through it, extracting all of the ones that don't match our current name. So I want all the caches that don't match static name. And those are the ones that I'm going to call delete on. Now I can do keys dot filter to reduce my array down to This. this is going to be a new version of the array, which will not include the one that matches the current name. So it's not going to be static name four or a static cache four. That's not going to be included in this new array. And then I call map again on the new version of that array. And for each one of those, I will call caches dot delete, not cache because I'm not deleting individual files. So like up here, we have cache. I don't want to do cache.delete to delete individual files. I'm using caches.delete, which is to delete an entire cache. And the one that I want to delete is this one. So I'm calling all of this. My problem is wait until wants to get back a promise. So what I need to do is I need to return 
promise.all and I can put this inside there because this is going to give me an array of promises. The array of promises is going to be this. Each one of these calls to delete returns a promise. So this is an array of promises. So I can return that. And once that is done, it will come back up here to caches. Wait until it was waiting for a promise to come back. So we have to make sure that whatever we do at the very end here, it bubbles up as a promise. All right, so we've got version number four. Should be the new one that we're creating. We're putting all of these files into it and we should delete numbers one, two, and three. So save that, come back in here. Four has been created, good. So that's what we expected. And as soon as I activate this, numbers one, two, and three should be deleted. Oh, unless we have a JavaScript error. Keys not defined, line 39. key. There we go. Okay. Static cache 4 has been updated. Skip waiting. And there's caches 1, 2, and 3 have been removed. We can do this again if I update the number to 5. Save it. That will add static cache 5. There it is. And as soon as this one's activated, the activation event listener will run and it'll delete number 4. And it doesn't have to be just these numbered versions, like static cache one, two, three, four. We can have other caches that we have other files and we can change our logic here. So it's not just deleting the version one, but it, we can delete anything that we want, any names that we want. Just a matter of changing this logic. This becomes a function where we're returning some expression. So is this true or is this false? We can put an if statement in there, return true, and false, return true or false. However we want to manage it, we can delete whatever caches we want. All right, so copy of this code, the finished version of the code is going to be linked to down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. Um, I'm going to be doing a video next about managing the size of the cache. So there's a storage API, which allows us to control how much is saved or figure out what percentage of storage has been used up by our cache. So we're going to do that next. And then after that, we're going to be delving into the fetch and using the fetch API from inside of our service worker. All right. And as always, thanks for watching.